currently of the Pelicans. Since Monday morning, Woj reported the Browse agent Rich Paul informed the team that AD will not be signing an extension with the team either this summer or the next when his contract actually expires. His next destination has been the subject of some rampant and gripping speculation to say the very least. And for everything that is actually fact right now about Anthony Davis, we bring in the one, the only, Woj. Woj, I gotta ask you, how are the Pelicans, as of right now, approaching this trade request? Methodically, Michelle, and uh, they're going to take their time. The, you know, teams are calling New Orleans. You know, they're checking in, see what the Pelicans might want from a particular team's roster, and to try to get a sense of their timeline. And the message that's been given out to teams is, hey, if you want to make an offer, go ahead. We'll, we'll put it up on our board. But New Orleans is really focused on the long play here with these trade talks with Anthony Davis. And uh, the trade deadline is obviously next Thursday. Uh, it is very unlikely that they're going to be engaged seriously enough with anybody to do a trade by then. Uh, they're really focused on getting Anthony Davis back on the court. They still would like to try to get back in the playoff chase. And, you know, they're still out there trying to improve that team uh, to stay in this. So they're, hmm. they're not in a, a mode right now of trying to get a deal done in the short term. All right, so you mentioned the fact that the trade deadline is, in fact, next week, and it seems highly unlikely that things will happen before then. So let's say that does occur that way. What happens to their options if that, in fact, is the case? Does it change anything? The, their options grow tremendously because they'll be able to have the Boston Celtics in trade discussions. Boston can't do the deal now. They can't do a deal with Kyrie Irving on their roster hmm. until after July 1. Uh, so essentially, uh, having Boston in the bidding, who is the team with the most draft picks, you know, several outstanding young players, and a really motivated team uh, to try and acquire Anthony Davis, uh, it only elevates everyone else, uh, everyone else's offers um, in, you know, in the trade process. And Boston, you know, is going to be there. And I think Boston has sent a message to the Pelicans: be patient, wait for us. We are going to be in this, and, and we're going to be willing to talk about, you know, essentially everyone on our roster outside of Kyrie Irving. So uh, I think right now it's put New Orleans very much in a holding pattern, and it's really dampened the possibility of the Lakers being able to do what they'd love to do is get a deal done uh, prior to the trade deadline. Uh, New Orleans has no interest in acquiescing Anthony Davis to the Lakers right now. Just going to chill. Woj, thank you. Stay safe out there. Guys, I want to turn it to you. What place makes the most sense for him? Well, you know what I'm going to say. I think, I think, <laughs> no, I don't. Well, I, think, I think it's Boston. What? I mean, because they have the young assets, the draft picks, and if you can find a way to keep guys like Kyrie, of course, Tatum, hmm. And build around that with Anthony Davis, then you got something. If he well, goes who are to you, the wait, who are you planning on? Well, anybody not named Kyrie or Jason Tatum. Okay. If you pair, if you have, you go into with those three, you get Anthony Davis, Kyrie, and Tatum on one team, you figure out the rest. And if I'm New Orleans, I'm saying to Danny Ainge, if I don't hear Jason Tatum's name, I'm not going <laughs> to answer the phone for you either. <laughs> but Paul is right. I mean, I think that it could wind up the best for him there. Look, the Lakers are the only team with incentive to get something done before the trade deadline because they don't want to let Boston in on this. And so that's how the Lakers could do that. The question is, and it's just interesting, listening to club executives around the league, they don't seem to be very impressed by the Laker ensemble at all in terms of putting that deal together. So I think there's as much pressure on our dear friend Irvin Johnson as there is on Dell Demps. Right now, Dill Dim shouldn't have any pressure. Not between now right. and the trade deadline, unless he sees something in that Laker offer that says to him, move now. Oh. This, oh, this is going to be fun. I don't see this GMs wanting to do this... the Lakers a favor. I don't either. I mean, Why would you? I mean, you? we've seen this over the years, the trade with Gasol. You know, the one setback was Saw it with Chris Pop. Paul. Saw trade. last year. Yeah, you saw, you saw last year. Pop didn't want to do the deal for right. Kawhi. So it's tough when you try to trade within the conference, which teams don't want to do, because it always comes back to haunt you. Not only that, but this has been so vocal and so public. I just feel like a pride standpoint, you're like, why would I help you after all? I mean, it's been humiliating. It's been a humiliating well, 48 hours. 